Hi, everyone. Welcome to the timingresearch.com Analyze Your Trade, episode number 109 for January 14th, uh, 2020. My name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of timingresearch.com. And uh, today we will be discussing your trade ideas. So over the last uh, few days, about uh, 40 people submitted up to five symbols each. And I've put the list together and we're going to be talking about as many of those as we can today. So uh, today I've arranged for Dean Jenkins to be here to moderate. And uh, Dean and I actually created the show together about two, what was it, about uh, two and a half years ago now. <laughs> um, so it's good to have Dean back to moderate and uh, Harry Boxer is here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dean. All right. Hey, David, thanks. Yeah, I haven't been on here in a while. I've been off doing other other stuff, but it's always good. I always enjoy this format. So, yeah. hey, welcome, traders, and uh, looking forward to this. And uh, we got Harry Boxer here who's sharing his screen right now and drawing all kinds of lines and trend lines and cool stuff. Um, I've never I've never met Harry before. I've never, never been on a panel with him before, so I look forward to it. And uh, Harry, if you take just a moment and introduce yourself, that'd be awesome. Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Harry Boxer of The Technical Trader, a site which has been um, active for 19 years. We, it's a site for technical analysis of stocks, and uh, we do mainly one-minute intraday charts for day trading, five- and 15-minute type charts for swing trades. Uh, principally, three-quarters to 80% of the stocks. I, the stuff I do is day trading, and I do issue three to five swing trades uh, on an average per week or so. Um, you can come to my site, thetechtrader.com, and uh, join for free for two weeks. No credit card. Just come on in and see what we're up to. I think you'll have a lot of fun and make some money. And most people tell us that they um, make the, enough money in the first two free weeks to pay for the first year or two. So um, I, I encourage you to come join us. It's a fun place to work at, to, to trade, work and trade, so to speak. And um, if you do join, and even if you decide not to come in, permanently, you still get a free uh, two DVD set of day and swing trading from yours truly. All right. Well, very good. And, you know, they're free, uh, free thing to go check out. So people, you know, that's pretty low risk. If you want to, if you, if you watch here, you kind of like what Harry's doing. Sounds like he's got a, a you know, kind of a low, uh, low barrier to entry to go give it a shot. Um, so I'm Dean Jenkins. I'm the founder of followmetrades.com. I run a, uh, stock advisory, stock alert, uh, stock and option system. I have a trading room and some educational services. And, uh, you know, our, our claim to fame is we're making pretty good, pretty good consistent profits. And then everything that I publish for a track record um, is uh, audited by a third party CPA firm. So if you look at my website, you see that, you know, we we're publishing some results. Um, you can go look and click and there are um, audit reports uh quarterly reports backing up our claims so that's and you know I, i'm a swing trader I, I trade primarily daily charts in trades between two to six weeks long so i kind of like to put on five to ten positions manage them let them run add one or two per week close a couple per week and just trade in a really relaxed mash fashion only spend a couple of hours a day in front of the computer that's that's my approach um, but we got a good list of uh, symbols here. I see uh, Harry's been uh, analyzing uh, CRWD as we go. We got 15 symbols. We should be able to get through. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll primarily look at Harry's chart here. And, um, you know, for each symbol, Harry will offer his thoughts, his analysis. I might add a few of my own. If I see something unique with my indicator set up, my platform, I might switch over, grab the screen for a minute and, and, and you know, do a little drawing on my own on my chart. But um, we'll try to kind of minimize the disruption there. But uh, so Harry, why don't you uh, offer your thoughts here on uh, CrowdStrike? Well, you know, obviously being a technical analyst, I strictly follow chart patterns and volume. Volume is always key for me. If you'll note the volume, the two days of last week when it broke out or the week before, I should say, uh, this stock made, made a major move, breakaway move. What I consider a breakaway move is when the declining tops line or channel down, the down channel breaks with a major volume surge, it takes out the flattened out or, or, or crossing over uh, 21 and 50 day moving average. That was a buy signal. A little bit of a pullback gave you an entry opportunity about the 53 and a half area. And within a week or so, the stock traded up to 60 and a half for, for a seven point pop already. And you can see that there is resistance from the November, December double top, which also comes in around 60. 
So the nominal breakout today, although it wasn't able to hold it, as you can see from the one minute chart, it got up to resistance and slightly threw it before backing off. What I like to look at is hourly charts to give you a better clear picture of the current pattern and scroll in on it. This is an hourly, not a daily chart. And it shows you in very, very distinctly, multiple waves down, one, two, three, four, five, basic Fibonacci, um, uh, Elliott wave type of pullbacks, and a re, re, uh, rebound or retest of about a 0.75, and then down again, double bottom. A lot of times you'll break out and you retest and broaden the base, which is what this did. But here's where the real volume came in. You can see on an hourly basis, huge volume there, break out on heavy volume there, and then it's been moving up steadily. What I want to see though, although there was one good day of volume, I want to see some more upside going. Now, one, one of the big positive divergences here is that on the hourly chart, the on-balance volume line, which is this dotted white line here, is already making new highs ahead of price. And so for me, this is uh, an indicator that this stock may want to go higher. My targets are going to be a retest of that zone around 70, 72. And if it gets jiggy with it, maybe about 80 or 82, but it may take a run up to that area and a pullback in some kind of consolidation zone before that occurs. But over the next weeks and months, 71, 2, 80, 82 are my targets. Support for those who are interested in where the stock might gather some support. I always look for highs and top lows and where stocks have pulled back to and where they held. It looks to me like for initial support is around 57 with the 50 day moving averages and lateral price support. That level also breaks the hourly trend channel and 100% must stop under, in my opinion, 56 because that can lead to a much deeper retrace. What's next? All right. Well, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna jump in with a few thoughts here on uh, on crowd myself. I'm looking at it on, on a daily chart, and I see the same breakout that you're talking about. I like it actually. You know, after that big impulsive move down that we see on the daily chart thing, you know, it IPO looks like last summer peaked out around 100, went down to 45, had a little channel there at the bottom in the last you know three or four weeks, and now a nice break and took out a prior high. So I kind of like this for a long. I'm looking at a uh, potential resistance area up around around 69.70 to, to 70 bucks. I put a stop on a daily chart around 53.10. So there's about a 1.1, 1.2 reward to risk ratio on that for me on a little bit longer time frame. So that's, that's marginal. I like to get up two to three to one reward to risk, but it's not bad. Thing yeah, trades think, monster I, volume, I think, so, so I it's just, not bad. Uh, Dean, I think he's the same on this. And um, your, your, the listeners out there may want to consider you know, if you like a lower price stocks for leverage, when you see a higher price stock like this that looks good, why not look at the 60 options? They're out of the money slightly, or even we'll look for a pullback and then buy the 57 and a half or something like that for a move to 70. That may be very lucrative if that occurs. Yeah, and it could be, but we got absolutely a move coming off that bottom, breaking breaking resistance. So there's something going on that's pretty interesting. Yep. And I like the liquidity on it, you know, 7 million shares today. I don't really like thinly traded stuff, and this is pretty good i bet there's a good deep option market on it too yeah indeed all right next up is uh bynd beyond meat another one that just recently ipo'd <laughs> while you're getting your chart together I'll, I'll tell my joke right here it's like i don't get it you know this you know i'll trade it for sure if there's a setup but i don't get why you have to go make vegetables look like meat if you like vegetables eat vegetables if you like meat eat meat but apparently there's a big business there so that's my <laughs> tongue-in-cheek let me ask you a question. Have you ever eaten one? No. If I want a burger, I'll have a burger. No, they're, they're amazing. I, I mean, uh, my girlfriend and I went out and had them a week ago, and we looked at each other like, this tastes exactly like a, a hamburger. Exactly. So I don't know what, what they've done. But we also thought, there's got to be a lot of chemicals in this. So, you know, yeah, you, if I want a carrot, I'll eat a carrot. If I want a burger, I'll eat a burger. That, but that's my take on <laughs> it. Well, let me give you my technical take, because this is a stock not only that I have a swing trade on, long and short. Um, first, we were long when it, when it popped out of the wedge here. Then I told everybody to sell the spike. Then I saw this bear flag, and I said it's forming a left shoulder head and a right shoulder. I told everyone in my room, and we went short at about 134. The stock dropped down to my target at 70. Bounced around, looked like it might even go lower, but then the big announcement came last week that their chief competitor, um, uh, dropped out of the race for McDonald's. They weren't able to supply enough meat for McDonald's. So that's when this thing took off. And because it was so heavily shorted, the stock went vertical from 75 to today's high at 135, at which point today at 133, I told everybody to exit their positions and potentially consider going short. Here's what we saw intraday. 
the stock spiked up. And when I see a big move up and then a spike into a high and then a reverse like that, the first pattern we see is a wedge and it's a bear wedge. It's right there. And we shorted the stock right there this morning at 123 and change. Quickly covered at 115. I was at eight point, and it didn't take long. Look how fast that occurred. Um, and right now, I'm just waiting to see what develops. But it looks like a toppy pattern, and uh, you can't see it on a one-minute chart, uh, on a one-daily chart. So let's look at a 15 minutes, and you see what looks like a, a topping pattern. So this is a very, very dangerous pattern. Now I'll also say this: and in many, many cases, when a stock looks like a head and shoulders or some sort of top, it turns out to be nothing more than a wedge, and it goes higher. So you've got to wait to see if this breaks one. 14. It does that. We're headed for 105. We may be headed back to 90, 98. Those are my targets. Yeah. So if, would you mind clicking over to a daily chart? And I'll just make a few comments and write off your chart if, if you're able to okay, do that. Yeah. That's easy. I'm on it right now. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, from its IPO, the thing went up to 240, lost, uh, you know, what, two thirds of its value channeled. And now it's breaking out again on that news right about the. Uh, the competitor not being able to back it out of the McDonald's fight. Yeah, and um, that's, that's impossible meat. Yeah. Um, so it's a nice break. Um, it's a little, you know, on a daily chart for me, it's a little far gone. If I were going to try and trade this, I'd let it retrace a little bit and then see if we get some support and evidence of a turn, maybe take another leg up. But right now, you know, the explosion already happened. The entry was back there as it broke the channel. It would have been great, but on a daily chart, my trading style, I don't, I don't chase rockets, right? Um, okay. Once it's gone, you have to wait for a retracement and see if you get another leg up. So it was great, but there's nothing there for me at the moment on uh, Beyond Meat. I agree 100%. Yeah, so. Uh, By the way, I want you to see something. This low, this low, and this low, which was the neckline of the head and shoulders, was 134. Look what the, today's high was, 135. So it came right up to key resistance and backed away. It's due for a big consolidation. It may even take you know, a week or two or three. Very good. Next, we got uh, HD. Well, the Home Depot. Home Depot. To me, this is a bearish chart, although overall it's still bullish. When I see a major year-long trend line broken there and broken with volume on the downside, See, when stocks go up on heavy volume and down on low volume, that's a good indication of a, a, of a bullish trend. When the trend changes to a breakaway gap to the downside, a snap back to resistance and then a failure to secondary support, and then forms what I call a bear flag or, or bear wedge, whatever you want to call this. It looks more like a flag. Um, for me, if it fails right in this range here, right there, it's coming down. And if it comes down and the market drops in particular, this is at least 210 and it may be down at 190. Uh, back to 199, 200. So, that, and if I draw my channel down, and if this is the beginning of a new down channel, theoretically, let's just say that it is, then, then I have a target closer to there at about 200. I can see the stock dropping 20, 23 points in the next, you know, week or two or three if we get any kind of bear phase whatsoever. Very likely. The trend has changed on this one because the volume on the downside is breakaway volume to the downside, and now the three wave corrective run up. It's coming on lower volume. It's not impressive. Underlying technical is flattened out. Not what you want to see on a, on a rally back. So careful on the Home Depot here. You could get, and I would put my stop right under here. If you're in it on the 216, I'm out. And I would be if I were you. Yeah, and I'm, um, I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not a buyer at Home Depot right now either. I, I do see that. I see that's potentially for a bigger correction, but it's, you know, the momentum in the correction is up. So there's not a short setup. There's definitely not a long setup. The, cool, the only cool thing on Home Depot is, you know, we're coming into uh, Q4 earnings and they're, uh, I think they're reporting on February 18. So uh, I like doing volatility plays into earnings. And so, you know, we get, uh, you know, uh, we get about two weeks out and you can start playing volatility. Even, even with price isn't moving, you can catch a rise into earnings and this would be a good one. It typically has has some volatility into earnings. But at this point for me, there's no trading on Home Depot. And if they miss their earnings, the stock would be 200. Easy. All right. We can't do a webinar without talking about Apple. So here we go. Yeah, Apple, Apple's a rocket ship. However, when I look at a long-term chart, which I always do, look at the major trend since, call it the last seven or eight years. It's a massive, one, two, three, four, five waves up. 
and the fifth wave has a one, two, three. So there's a possibility of a fourth and fifth wave take this to 350, 375 if we get a blow off phase in the market. But anyone that looks at this chart knows that it's extended. To what, to what, you know, what extent, I can't tell you necessarily if the momentum is over, it's not. Until this breaks, that trend line for starters, just for starters, it takes out lateral price support here. I would say I'm a goner if Apple takes out 306. Simple as that, because then you, you're vulnerable to 299, 293, 286, those are targets. Um, you don't have to sell it, but you may want to stop it. Uh, there's a trend channel, and if it breaks the channel and then takes out the moving average, which is right now the 50-day moving average, which I follow religiously, is 308.66, and lateral price support for starters is about 311. So 311, 308 and a half is the areas to watch. And my target next on the top of this channel is 324 roughly. All right. Um, you know, obviously you said rocket ship. And like I said earlier, I don't chase rockets. You know, what a, what a beautiful, amazing trend if you're in that one long. Um, you know, uh, it's awfully extended. So I'm not going to chase this one. And, you know, short and apple isn't, isn't the most clever thing in, uh, at currently. And there's really no sign for a short for me on the daily chart. And you know, if you did get a sign, the next thing I would check on Apple, they have something unique. Um, before you go short it, make sure you know where the blackout periods are because um, you know, they've got uh, a treasure chest bigger than some, you know, some country's GDP and they have a lot of buyback authorized and they can prop their own price up if they choose. So you don't wanna try and short Apple if they're pushing it long. That's something to pay attention to. Well, Dean, I, I have a philosophy that with so many charts, 12,000 companies out there to, that you can, you know, short if you want to. Why would you short a chart? Uh, why would you stand in front of a runaway freight train? Uh, why wouldn't you short a stock that's already rolled over, maybe snap back and fail and start a new downtrend? I can show you, with, I have like 30 stocks in my box of shorts list, but I'm not going to get into it. The bottom line is it's unnecessary to short a strong stock. No, it's a, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's a super important point. It's one I try to make when I'm doing some education. Is you know, you, you, you talk to people and you know it's like, okay, how, you know how how should I trade Amazon or how should I trade Apple or how should I trade Microsoft? And the, the question is not how do you should you, should you, right? And you know, in this case for Apple, you know for me, way too late to get long and no case for a short. So I just move on and go find something with a good setup. And I think that's the point you're making. Yeah, and that, that but a perfect example in my room. I got a dozen traders trying to short Tesla all the way up. And I keep telling them, are you out of your mind? Look at the stock and just in the last two, three, four, five, six weeks, 325 to 540 some odd, and they're, and they're shorting all the way up and getting stopped out every time. It's like, don't wait till at least you start to see a lower low. If you see a lower low, the trend's changing from up to down, then you can short it. I wouldn't touch Tesla with a 10 foot pole on a short side until it breaks 515, 516. And even then, you got support, moving average and price support along that zone at 498. So, I mean, if it's gonna drop down into the 390 or 450 range or something like that, there's plenty of time to short it. I'd rather make sure it's confirmed on the downside, just like I do stocks on the upside, before I chase them either down or up. And so, plenty of stocks out there to short, there's plenty of negative looking charts, you don't need to short something. Just because it's expensive or looking overbought, doesn't mean it can't be more overbought. The market will outlast your, your financial portfolio. I heard you doing a little bit of uh, Elliott Wave analysis, and I use a simple version of Elliott Wave. And on a short like this on Tesla or Apple or something, if I am going to short it, I'm going to take C leg of a wave for down. I'm not going to try and catch the first move because you're going to get faked out too many times. Perfect. Exactly what I, my philosophy. All right. Uh, Pinterest, P-I-N-S. Well, I had a real good day today because they announced that Pinterest has moved ahead of Snap as the number three most uh, used or whatever uh, social media site. And of course, after an ugly, ugly chart, let's look at the daily. This stock was really lousy looking. Obviously, you had massive one, two, three, four, five wave down, and then made a lower low, but managed to base out. There's a huge gap from back in November. I pay attention to gaps. Not that they have to be filled, but they're usually resistance. Today, and you can see that it never got through it. it for the first time in months, the stock broke through the 50 day and settled in for a couple of days. And today that news spurred this stock even further. Let's take out some noise here. Yeah. yeah and I, you know, it's funny uh, if, if anybody listening has ever been to London, rode the tube, they have an announcement at all the stations as you step on the trains, mind the gap, 
mind the gap. And I was like, uh, Harry's in the same place I am. You got to mind the gap. They're resistance or support, right? And well, I wouldn't to- be going along on a daily chart till it, till it clears the gap. Could fail in there at any point in my, you know, there's other sh- charts traded. I don't need to do something sketchy. But, uh, but, uh, but on the plus side, it broke through the 50 day, it broke through the declining top line, it's into the gap. And you know, um, I'm 73 years old, I've been doing this for 68 years. And I can, I mean 58, excuse me. I can tell you that this, when I'm showing you, 50% of the gap, it's amazing how often a stock will get into the gap about 50% of the way and then pull back. So if you want to target, it's around 23. But beyond that, it may pull back. If it does get through 23, the gap fill is 24 and a half. Simple as that, but it's not my first choice. Yeah. Next up is uh, LK, Chinese coffee company, taking on the mermaid. Yeah, you know, um, I've been swinging this stock. It's been a tech trader swing. Just recently when it broke out here, we did great with it. From the low 20s to the high 40s, I got everyone out at 48. That was my target, and I told people to start exiting in 48. Not that it can't go higher, but when you look at the move this has had and connect these tops, we're at the top of this where we're resistance might come in. And not only that, Breakaway gap through the moving averages with big volume that that triggered this move. But how piggly piggy do you want to get? It's gone from 1830 to 48. That's 30 points in two months. So a little ahead of the game. It sounds like it's overbought and extended. Um, if I'm a buyer, if I'm long this stock, I'm going to put tight stops all the way up. Let's look at an hourly chart real quickly. Yeah, my stop is right there. I'm not letting the stock go on to 42, and for sure. And by the way, that's another thing. People put stops in. I always tell, here's my philosophy. You don't have to buy all at once. You don't have to sell all at once. What's wrong with stopping half your position there? And if it gets into that level and bounces, you're still long half of your position. But if it takes that out, then you're out at an average of somewhere in there if it should go down. I'm, I'm a big believer in uh, scaling out and scaling in. That's just my personal philosophy. But in the case of LK, it's certainly extended. Got to be careful here, especially if this market backs off, which I think it's ripe for. No, and I, I totally agree with you. It sounds like we got a lot in common, right? I like to scale in, scale out, right? Trades don't have to be digital, all or nothing. Um, it, it, it's amazing how when a person makes a decision, he buys it all or he sells it all. And that, to me, is amateurish. Pros don't do that. They scale in and scale out. All right. Uh, Disney is the next on the list here. And I guess they got a new, uh, they just hired a new voiceover talent. Have you heard that news? Who was it? Uh, what's her name? Uh, Markle. Oh, really? Yeah. They just That's take the deal with, uh, with her husband <laughs> for her to go do voiceovers. That's amazing. All right. So they left the family, the family, the Royal family for Disney, I guess. Is that it? <laughs> I guess. Well, here's a nice little action. Look, I told everybody when it broke out right there, there's probably a good swing trade. I gave them a target. At 150, it reached 153 and change, or 52, 90. Now it's an orderly retrace. What I would call it's a bull flag. Um, I would like to see it not get much lower than where it is. Today's low, maybe a stop for me at 142. Um, and if it does break out of that, the measured move on this one would take Disney much higher. I would say, one sec, about 25 points from here is what my target is. That is 167. And if you look at the angle of ascent on this angle here, it comes in about 168.70. So I got to target 165, 67. Of course, you have to take out the highs first. The all-time high of Disney is reached right there, 153.41. We take that out. Look for an additional 12, 15 points. And that all-time high for me, you know, in, in just a quick look is a is a completed and beautiful uh, wave five, Elliott wave five, and now we're in you know, kind of that complex correction phase and it's deciding what it's going to do next. So yeah, I wouldn't take it unless it took, put new highs and it could, could turn it into a new three. But um, for me, it's, it's kind of a hold and watch. Yeah. All right. Uh, Adobe, if there were an alternative, everybody would use it. This is the hardest company to work with. Yeah, I agree. Um, I just want to show you something to blow everybody's mind. Here's a stock that went from, uh, according to this, now it could be split adjusted, but it, you could have bought this in 1986 for 25 cents. And here it is, 345. Now, obviously, well, not too many people are going to hold it. I think the key in Adobe was that it spent seven or eight years basing, broke out, and just kept running. 
And right now, um, if you look at the daily chart, you'll see that the recent consolidation pullback channel, much like Disney's doing now, broke out right there with a the breakaway gap. It's a no-brainer for me when I see a pattern, a major pattern, when a volume spurts on a breakaway gap. You would be surprised how often that triggers a major move. However, now the stock has run from 260 to 350, uh, 90 points or something like that. And so it's a little extended as usual, but and it's near the top of the channel. So it's overbought, but momentum could take this to 363 and it may take it to 380 before it's over. Everything depends on the market. If the market's gonna take a hit, everything's gonna take a hit. Um, and but my, where I would put a stop on is under 325. This little pullback low, if we break that, I, we're gonna break support. Two levels of support, 325 and 314. Roughly, you can stop half under each each area and then look for peeling off positions at 360 and 375.80, if it extends. All right, um, we're halfway through the list and we're, we're rocking and rolling here pretty good. And um, I don't, you know, I agree with your analysis on Adobe. It's a little late for me to chase. I think your support levels are absolutely correct. That's where I'd be looking at them as well. Um, I like to stop when I'm moderating halfway through and, um, you know, it's rare for me to find a good trade, right? They're a needle in a haystack. But I hate to sit here and go, nope, don't like it, nope, don't like it, and just be a total downer. So I do like to share um, one or two picks that I actually do like, because um, there are trades I do like. And uh, let me grab the screen for just a moment, Harry. I'm going to, uh, oh, it's not going to let me. Let me see. I can't do it. If you, maybe you just go ahead and type it in so we don't fumble with the platform here. Type in uh, Canopy, CGC, if you would. Daily uh, chart. Yeah, well, CGC happens to be one of my personal favorites. And it's a, I had a, three, three different home runs with this stock. Let me show you something real quickly. Break out there. Yeah, I, I, I had a couple last year. And I just took a new long today. And um, I think we're going to do well. Right. Well, anyway, one, we had a one, two, three, four, and a, a mini fifth wave up. And it then came down and we tested broke support. I had a $38 stop. We were all stopped out at 38. The stock goes down at 13. This is, this is an, a classical, uh, perfect 45 degree angle, you know, channel down. A selling climax with a breakaway. Here's a breakaway gap, a selling climax type move, a big volume, but even better volume on the upside with a breakaway gap there. So to me, this was the beginning of the move. And I told everybody, look for, uh, to see if it can get to the economic top side and lateral price resistance, which it didn't. Then it set up nicely here at a low volume ebb right near the apex right there on a very little bar. Popped out, but only had one day move, could not follow through. I told everybody it looks like it's setting up an inverse head and shoulders. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder, pattern. This basically was a massive breakout yesterday and another even better move today. My targets are, and have been, 26 and 29 short term. And in the immediate term, we're looking for mid 30s, maybe 37, 8. I'm trying to be on yeah. the Sounds like we're on the same page here, tracking the same thing. So I, yeah, I, I initiated an alert, took along on this today, and I, I think we're in good shape on it. I'm pretty stoked. So maybe, uh, Harry, if you got one, one nice trade you'd like to share before we get back to the list? Well, I mean, I got so many, but I want to show you a low price today. This is going to be interesting. Check out this chart. Um, this is a stock that's gone from uh, 30 cents to $1.75. And I'm hearing from people internally uh, and from people that are close to the company, institutional clients of mine, that they're expecting massive news to come out about new contracts and things of that nature and a move to test the all-time high of four. But we're all hearing eight, 10, $12 in the stock in the next year. So for 2020, my pick of the year in terms of percent moves is this stock at currently at $1.69. It's called Milestone Scientific. And I know a lot of people don't like low price stocks. And there's a reason why they're low price, but here's an emerging stock with strong, look at the weekly, I wanna show you the, the, uh, the, the monthly bars too. This has got some really strong rising um, pattern and a strong volume coming in, an unbalanced volume. Um, I'm just excited about this little stock here. And full disclosure, I have a big position on myself. This looks to me like a rocket ship. The same, right. people, the same people who were in this stock at $1.50 when I got this stock and it rode up to nine are heavily in Milestone Scientific. So a little, a little teaser pick for, for your, the listeners out there. There you go. And this is being recorded. You can always pull it back up and go, should have listened. All right. Next on the list is IIPR. I have no idea what company that is. Let's see. They're, they're, they're a real estate firm for um, marijuana companies. That's what they specialize in, from what I've heard. And, and when the marijuana craze took off, this stock took off. 
Take a look at 19 to 140 some odd. Rocket ship. It double topped at 139, I believe, right there. Came down, bounced from the bear flag, came down, bounced, had a one, two, three, four, five wave, elite wave moved down. Rallied to resistance, double topped and pulled back and made a higher low. So for me, it's a nice setup for a breakout, but I want to wait for the confirmation and I want to see the stock get over 87 and seven and a half with volume. My target's in that 98 and 115. Then we'll see where we go from there. No, like I it. like that. I got, I got that same breakout level I just drew on my chart. Right above it, I got the 200 day simple moving average. And, it, and you're going to hit the 200 right as you cross that line. So I'm going to let it cross the 200. Look at about 91. And if so, it's got nothing but sky. Um, it could be, if you get over 140 on it, on a larger Elliott Wave 5. Yeah, I see it. So that's, I, I kind of like that one. If it can, I, I, I'm a buyer at about 91. On I also would watch volume on this one. It's getting a lot of green bars on my TC2000 charts. But I want to see bigger volume, like up in here on the upside when it breaks out, to confirm that there is, you know, buyers all over it and liquidity. All right, uh, our next one. I was actually doing this show uh, with another another guy, more of a fundamental guy, and um, <clears throat> we were doing it when we're looking to look at Boeing here, BA, and um, we were doing the show when the planes first got grounded, and he said, "Buy on the dip, man. Buy every dip." Um, I guess it depends on what your time frame is because I don't buy on the dip. I, I'm a technical trader. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, funny you, it's funny you said that. I want to I share something with you. I had a discussion on my website today. And people are saying, what does Boeing look like? I'm thinking, why are you even looking at this stock with all the problems they have? They just announced today that they're having discussions with banks for financing because they've gotten zero orders for this year. This company's got a problem now, a big problem. And I don't know when it ends. And I don't think it's out, done yet. As a matter of fact, you can see the multiple tops up around 385.90. And then you see three or four lows here at 318.20. If this should break that, and this is a bear flag, if it should break this bear flag, it's going down to 295.98. And it may be a lot worse than that because if it gets below 292.95, all hell would break loose. A massive top has formed on Boeing over the last two years, believe it or not. And, um, and I, so, I agree. We, if we break support, we're nothing but air, right? Look at this top. Yeah, this thing can go down. The 250 easy if it cracks 290. So yeah, nothing but air is right. But you gotta wait. You cannot do it now. It's in a channel. It's a lousy setup right now. For you know, nothing to trade right now. Right. Under, 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 but under 320, it could be a short for 295. Down there. All right. I said earlier we, you can't do a show without doing Apple. You, you got to do Netflix too, and that's next up. Well, um, I was very happy. Okay, let me, let me give you my take. When, after the December low last year, not, not uh, the year before, in 2018, and this stock rocketed, this was actually the NASDAQ 100 leader in terms of its percent gain and the weight, or the, at least the angle of ascent was very strong. But here, this breakaway gap to the downside, when I believe they announced some competition, I forgot what, maybe, maybe Disney announced their Disney Channel or something. But the stock got hammered from 385 down to about 250. Uh, which, by the way, was my support level. And then it ramped up and ran rather nicely. But do you notice that along this run up, the volume has been fairly muted. The underlying technicals have gone flat. This is not an impressive run up. For me, I'm a seller up here, um, especially if it breaks down there. You cannot let Netflix go below, in my mind, 320, 21. If it does that, you know, it could be down to 288 quickly. Uh, on the upside, there's a big gap in here. And again, the minute, middle of that gap was tagged or near it. The, the target is 360, and then the double top or triple top up here at 385. Those are my targets on the upside if the rally continues. And there's my stop in the lead now. Not particularly impressed with the pattern. Yeah, I'm. I'm not. You know, I, I got. There's better charts out there to trade for me. Um, there might be an earnings play. We'll go take a a butterfly or a calendar spread or something on earnings. But you know, just a swing trade here is nothing. Nothing for me on that. And, and Dean, I, I also want. I also want to say personally, I'm a big believer in leverage. If I could buy 10,000 shares of stock in 10 or 20 or, or, or more, I'd rather scale out 2,500 at a time. But where's the leverage in buying a stock at 338 and it goes up to 345? Seven points is 2%. I'd rather, I'm looking for five, 10% a day or more, 20%, 30%. We've had I'm, stock. I'm, with, I'm yeah. with you. I'm with you. So this is, you know, and some of the low price stocks you showed earlier, you know, can, you know Canopy, right? You, you could get a, you know, 15, 20% move would be nothing, you know? I agree. I think Dave, Canopy, you know, 
even a 50% reach race takes you up to about 35. Right. Right. Yeah, we're looking for big moves, right? Percentage yeah. big moves. Uh, when? W-Y-N-N. -N. Well, I haven't looked at it in a few days. It, it looks great in that um, it's been it moved out of a mini triple bottom base uh, from the little platform and broke out. I knew it was going to test the highs, but I got to tell you, um, based on the overall picture, it looks promising, but it's at a very big resistance level from there and there. Now, maybe if wind blows through 152, we can see it right up there, 165, 175 range, uh, and it probably will if there's a still strong market. But I'm, I'm, worried, I'm worried about everything up here near resistance because the market takes a hit here. Anything that's out of resistance zone is going to start to you know, have people kick it out. I, I couldn't add anything to it. I'm totally with your analysis. Sounds like we got a lot of overlap here in what we do. Um, we already did Tesla. That's on the list. We, we went through it. Um, RGLD. Our gold, gold. Okay, now, to me, this is the best gold company in the world. Seriously, folks. Um, how many stocks look like this? Even gold stocks. How many gold stocks from the low of 2016 when it was traded at 24 have gone up to 150? How many gold stocks have gone up 500%? in four years not too many most of them don't look this way yeah short term they've all had nice moves but now i'm worried about all the gold stocks i think this has had its big run um i think it's due for a much bigger retest perhaps down to 93 95 and it may retest this trend line at one point in the high in the low to mid 80s but i'm i'm bearish on the stock unless it shows me the ability to get back above 125 with energy meaning good volume note on the weekly chart and in five of the last seven weeks, the stock's been down and on down volume, and the prior five weeks in a row there. So we're talking about 10 out of the last 15 weeks the stock is showing uh, distribution. So I'd be careful in anything gold, and in particular, this one, which is such a high-priced stock in the gold sector. 100% um, drop dead rock hard stop under 107, right there. That breaks the, uh, it's already broken the trend line in my mind, but it breaks the 50-day moving average, and it breaks the last pullback low, and Dean, uh, there's a little bit of a philosophical difference that you and I have. I'm a big believer that the 200 day moving average is a waste of time. I know you won't, believe, won't, won't agree with me, but when it comes to short and swing trading, the 50 and the 20 day moving averages are way more important. And if, I, and if you look, talk to institutional traders, they all watch the 50 day moving average. Some of them- I got, I got the 50 on my chart. I got the 50 in, on, a, on a daily chart trading longer term. I got the 50, the 200 and the uh, HMO cloud. So okay. looking at a variety of things. Gotcha. And, and anyway, I just, you know, to, every, every chart's different, but you can, you can find charts that absolutely find support and resistance at various, you know, 50 to 200, each mocha cloud. It's really which chart is respecting which indicator, you know, which one applies. Okay. Uh, one more on the list here, and then we can freeform a little bit. Uh, Ford, symbol left. What a beauty. Um, you know, here's a stock that's a waste of money for 10 years. Now, yeah, it had a, a spike low. It almost went out of business, traded at a buck back in 08 when the market you know, crashed. And it made a nice run. And that's just the biggest move I've ever seen it for, to go from 1 to 19, 19 fold move. But since then, nothing. Now, what's it look like now, looking at a daily chart? Um, I actually looked at this and said, this is a V bottom of the platform. And when it broke out here, I told all my people, this has got a, this is broken out. Now it's not huge volume, but it looked pretty good because it broke its declining top line and it came off of a low and formed a platform and broke out. So it took out the declining top line and lateral price resistance. But once it got up to secondary resistance, it did nothing and it's pulled back. I would avoid Ford like the plague. I don't know what they're doing wrong, um, but I can't see this chart anyway, anyhow, at all. And that may be on a long-term basis, but to me, it's a waste of money being in a stock and it has been for 10 years. Yeah. Buy the truck, not the stock. Yeah, exactly. Um, here, here's one to bring up, and it's just to make a point. Um, if you would bring up uh, JCPenney, JCP. And this is the importance. This had a triple top, and I was looking to go, if that breaks, I, I could be a buyer if you look at that triple top, and that's why we wait. That is right there is why we wait. Look what happened. It's actually, it's actually one, two, three, four quadruple top. Right. So if it would broke above, it would have been cool, but that's why you got to pay attention to these um, resistance areas, you know, because look what happened. It got absolutely decimated. 
and now it's not support. But you know what? This is like Sears Roebuck to me. I, I, this, this is going. I don't know where this company's going, but it's 80 cents. They can't survive. I, I, it's one of those retailers that is so far behind, you know, uh, modern times. Uh, it, just like Sears Roebuck was. I, I just think it's, you know, we talk of pure speculation here. But any breakdown like that, technically, uh, is not good with heavy, heavy buying on the downside. Yeah. Now, if it had broken that line and go up to the prior high, but uh, you know, buck ninety, that would have been a, a decent trade. And I would have, you know, I don't care why, I would have taken it. But I agree. Um, all right. So that's the list, man. We we completed our task. Do you have any others you wanted to throw out as ideas for folks? Well, I got a lot of ideas out there. I want to point out a really interesting, fairly new company uh, called Nubase. Um, they are a state-of-the-art biotech company with a platform that nobody has and management is highly respected. And what they did is they went to public via a reverse merger. And they took over a company called Or Pharmaceuticals and went public and that happened right there and the stock popped and pulled back. and worked its way higher from three to eight. Um, I'm hearing 2025 next year if the data in January is good. It's pulling back right now to a key support area. And I think it's a buy of this dip right there into that zone. Uh, you can see the long-term chart pattern. Uh, anywhere near this zone in there is a buy, and a, my, my target on an intermediate basis would be for a retest of eight, a move up to 10, and then 12, and longer term, much more than that. But really like the company, the management, and their, and what this company's working on is pretty incredible, uh, bi biotech-wise, you should look into it. Uh, that's just one of my recent biotech picks. I'm pretty good at picking biotech stock, particularly technically. I do have a short I'll share. Um, I like it right now. I don't know if you'll like it or not, but um, you know, everybody's got their own thing, but um, I'm actually short Goodyear tire GT. And I think it's got, it's not going to, it's not going to drop like a rock, but it's got a nice steady downtrend um, after, a, you know, had a three down, a four up. Now we're in a five down and it's a nice steady drift down. I like it. So I'm in well, this here, short. Uh, uh, Dean, here's what I disagree on. Um, Good. Okay. I'll show you why. Long downtrend. Long downtrend. It basically broke its declining top line and then pulled back to it. We see that a lot. And this is what I call a V bottom with a right hand extension, then a platform. Now, I do agree with you that if it breaks the recent low under 14 or so, it'll probably test 13. Um, I don't think this is the kind of stock that I like anyway. It's an old line company, good year tire, you know. So it's, uh, I like biotech and tech stocks. They give me the big percentage moves. In my opinion, you won't get a big percentage move on a stock up until it breaks about across here with huge volume. So, that, so my swing target is 17, and then I'm looking up at 20. That's if, and only if, it holds this line. And I want to show you why I drew this in here. That is what I think would be the angle of ascent, and it's a little skittish. So maybe you're right on this angle, because I would have preferred it to have held right there and then broken out and ran off instead of broke down. So uh, I can't disagree with you 100%, but I will say um, it's not my ideal short. There's so many better looking shorts out there. Um, just be careful. Yeah, you know, it's a, you know the, the, the fact that we have different approaches, all traders, you know, kind of makes the world interesting, right? Yep. I have another one to share. It's a stock I loved and I traded it huge. This was a big winner for me when it broke out right there uh, in 2017. I put a swing trade at 24 and three quarters and within 60 days, it was 113 or something. It was a monster move. Five waves down, base and breakout. Look at the breakout volume two days ago. And look at the follow through on it. This has huge momentum, but it's filled with gap and it made back and fill. I hope it does. And I, I believe it's down after hours on some news. I'm not sure what the news is. Went down at 20 and a half. It's back up to 25. So it may be a second up. Here's the bottom line. Um, I think this is a $36 stock going forward, and beyond that, I'm looking at 45 All right, looks like uh, one of the attendees has a, a symbol they want to look at, SPCE. What is it? SPCE. I have, are you talking to Frank Paul and Charles Edwards? Sam, Paul, Charlie Edward. Virgin, Galactic. Oh, space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, look, we traded this stock here, here, and here, even today. I think it's long in the tooth. It's also, if you're looking at the basic alley wave, one, two, three, four, five. I'm not chasing a stock that's already had five waves that's gone from six and change to 14 that quickly. We're talking not even two months. 
Um, and I don't think that the earnings, and I don't think they have any earnings. I'm not sure what this is based on. And I don't care, like you said, we'll trade anything if the chart's telling me to. Does it have a little bit more momentum? Can it get up to 15, 16 range? Yeah, but I'd be awfully careful. Notice that it's had one, two, three, four, five days in a row with higher lows. For me, the first time this stock makes a lower low, under 1370, and it's 1397 now, I've stopped half my position there, half under 13 and say sign on. If it holds 13 and runs up, my next target is gonna be 16, 17. But anytime a stock's had five waves up already, and it's in the middle of the fifth wave, you don't know where that fifth wave is gonna peak out. I would be careful any stock that has zero fundamentals as far as I know, okay? And it's gone from six and three quarters to 14. I think it's hype and I think it's dangerous. Yeah, it, it is, well, it's pure emotion. Pure emotion, right? Nothing else. Um, pure hype. All right. Well, hey, we did a good job here. We, we knocked out the list. We threw out some other ideas, good handful of them. And uh, 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 probably a good good time to go ahead and wrap it up, David. Uh, you know, we're, we're coming up on the top of the hour here. And like I said, we knocked out the list. We, we did some other ones. So I think. Uh, uh, sure. Yeah. You got through a, well, got through a lot it. of. A lot of different uh, stocks. So, yeah, if you guys want to go ahead and do uh, do closing statements, then we can wrap up the show. All right. Yeah. Before, if you got any any closing thoughts there, Harry, you want to share before we wrap it up? Yeah, I'm extremely concerned about the market from a timing standpoint. I, I, I there's a lot of my friends who are involved with uh, elite wave analysis with Fibonacci and some very good cycle people who are telling me this time frame is extremely dangerous. That's number one. Number two, it's obvious with a 12 year bull market or whatever it is, that this market is so due for an intermediate pullback at some point. I also will say that there's enough out there in terms of uh, impeachment process and, and trade war and things of that nature that at any moment could have a dramatic effect on the market. For me, the market is itching to get crushed. Let's put it that way. We can have a one day smack at any point and this can continue for two, three or four more months. But at some point in the next few weeks and months, I think the market's gonna have a very substantial pullback. And I'm, I'm loaded for bear. I'm looking at all my shorts, keeping that list in mind. I'm not short anything. I'm long everything. But I'm prepared to reverse my position very quickly. Uh, I also want to just say uh, that I more than welcome everybody to come into my site. Check us out for two weeks for free. No credit card necessary. Uh, come take a look at thetechtrader.com. I think you'll enjoy yourself and make some money. Thanks for having me. All right. Hey, thanks, Harry. Nice to meet you and to do a session here with you. And then for anybody else listening, again, I'm, I'm Dean Jenkins. I'm a, I run a site called followmetrades.com. I just popped the uh, URL into the chat box if you see that there. And you're welcome to come check out the site, what I got to offer. There's a free newsletter, uh, market analysis, that you can come check out, see what the results have been. And I got some material about how I approach the market, how I trade. And so see if that's a, uh, uh, a good fit for you. And be, feel free to drop me a note, dean at followmetrades.com. If, uh, if you got any questions or want some follow-up, I'll put that email in here. And Dean, let's stay in touch, okay? Sure. Yeah. So there is my email in the chat box. And uh, hey, no matter what, and by the way, I agree with Harry, you know, 12-year bull market, one of these days it's going to crack. That's a normal, healthy thing. Um, when it does, I'll be ready and we'll make some really good profit. Meanwhile, you know, we're going with the flow. Um, so that's a wrap. Um, no matter no matter what you do, trade safe. Keep your winners big, your losers small. And use risk control at all times. And David, I will turn it over back to you. Thanks all right. For having Thanks, guys. Uh, lots of good information today. So just a quick reminder to everyone, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast network. And you can also go to timingresearch.com to get access to any of the past shows and uh, including the recording of this one as soon as I can get it posted. Um, so just want to thank my guests again for today. Harry Boxer of thetechtrader.com and Dean Jenkins of followmetrades.com. Great to have you both back. So, uh, and uh, thanks everyone. Bye-bye.